Welcome to the next in a series of discussions that I'm having with Anthony Grzielka, the psychic medium. I'm Pietro O'Shaughnessy. Anthony, we talked about children and many aspects of the passing and maybe life choices and contracts of children. I'm interested to hear what happens with people who've lived, to put it mildly, a negative physical existence, people who've been evil in this life, people who've been serial killers, torturers, dictators. We're talking about the Mugabes, the Idi Amins, the people who've been consciously cruel and evil. This is a difficult subject because everybody will have their own opinion as what should happen to those people. The first thing I do need to say, and this will upset some people, I know, but these people will go to exactly the same place that we go when they pass. Their soul is treated no differently to you or I, the passing process I'm talking about, from moving from the physical to the spiritual existence, will move across and exactly the same things will happen. However, when someone who's lived a particularly evil life, like Idi Amin or Adolf Hitler or one of these others that we could think of, they will be quarantined when they get to spirit. Their energy will be quarantined. And the reason for that is their soul, the energy that they bought with them from spirit, will be so damaged, will have so many holes in it because of what they've done, that they will need to be treated very, very differently. They will be basically confined and quarantined. And in some cases, their energy has been damaged so badly that they won't be able to be helped and be bought whole again. Because there's so much karmic debt owed and there's so many holes in their soul energy, they won't be able to be regenerated, basically, and basically be pulled apart and put back together again. Because there's just too much damage done there. Having said that, however, I also believe that in some circumstances, now this is where the controversy starts, in some circumstances I do believe a negative energy has been contracted to play a part in the human evolution, in the, the evolution of the human species, the evolution of the human soul. Now, that's a very, very difficult thing for someone to hear who's been under the pressure of one of these people or been spited by one of these people. Now, these are very difficult things for people like this to hear. And I've had this discussion with my father, and my father was a victim of the Holocaust and a survivor. And we've had long discussions about this. Now, you need to have a look at the experiences from some of these negative people. I mean, take the Second World War because it is one that that's relevant to a lot of people. When we look at what came out of the Second World War, I would rather none of that have ever happened. But there has been a heck of a lot of good that came out of that terrible time in our history. There's been so many medical breakthroughs in that time, so many technological breakthroughs that have come out of that conflict. If we take away the experience and the negativity of it, there are lots of positive things that have come out of that experience. Of course, one wouldn't want that on anybody, and I certainly think if we could have found a better way around that, it would have been better. But in some circumstances, I do believe a negative energy is put in place because of the learning contracts and because of flow-on effect of these experiences. Now, that's a very brave energy that takes on that job. It's a very brave soul, and I think in some circumstances, and this is again where the controversy starts, some energies have to be very highly advanced to be given the role of a negative entity to come back and play a person like Adolf Hitler or a person like Idi Amin or one of these others. In some circumstances, I do believe a very highly evolved energy has been given this task because of the amount of damage is going to be done to their soul. A higher energy or a more advanced soul are the only ones that could probably do that job. And it's needed because human life needs to go through that. The souls, human souls need to go through that experience as a worldwide thing, not just as a, as a small group of energies. It's a very hard concept to understand, and I don't believe that in every circumstance that's the case. I think it would be one which would be isolated and rare, but I do believe that is the case in some circumstances. Anthony, when we talked about contracts, this is difficult to comprehend because you could argue that if everyone comes to earth with a contract then there would have to be some kind of contract that would involve someone 
being so evil. On the other hand, we do have free will and you get the circumstance where, for example, you look at a serial killer who's been quite appallingly sadistic mm. in the way in which they've captured, tortured and killed people over a very long period of time. Almost inevitably, when you look at the early years of that serial killer, there's been some sort of appalling trauma. There's been some experience where they've grown up to be without love, sometimes quite cruelly so. And in most cases, not all, but most, their actions are a reaction to their earlier life. They probably don't even understand that themselves. I do understand what you mean, Peter. And, you know, when you take a, a serial killer, for instance, when you look at this person and you look at this person's energy, what you said earlier is very important, free will, because this person has gone through an experience. Now, Everybody reacts differently to an experience. Some will act negatively, some will act positively against an experience. That is your choice. And that is the important thing to understand here. As opposed to Adolf Hitler where you've got or one of these people that do it on a big scale, you've probably got it affecting so much of humanity. With a serial killer, he has a decision to make. How does he respond to the emotions and the feelings that he's bringing forward here? Does he react by killing somebody? By some perverted action? Well, does he try and seek help? Does he try and look at the situation and come to terms with what he's feeling and get some sort of resolution that way? And that's the important thing to understand here, that that life contract may have included him being a serial killer, but that was up to him. He had to make the decision whether he went this way or he went that way. And he took the wrong decision, became a serial killer and got involved and probably sentenced to death and all these other things that, that happened to these people. But the next lifetime he comes back, he'll probably live the exact same lifetime again and have to face up with the same decisions. Now, he'll be given extra tools next time. So look, we're going to send you back with more tools to try and handle this. And hopefully next time, his free will will work in a positive way and not in a negative way. So he can develop and learn. So it's not as clear cut as just saying someone had a negative experience in their early life and they developed this way. You know, I know many, many people. Take my father, for example. He lived a terrible young life during the Nazi occupation of Poland and the things that went on there, terrible, terrible things that he saw. If you speak to my father now, he's a very sane, open, very thoughtful, intelligent man. He didn't become a serial killer because of that. He chose not to let that get on top of him. He chose a path that he said, no, I'm going to get above this and rise above this. And this is the thing. Maybe with a more advanced energy, an energy that's had more lifetimes here, has got more energy behind it from lifetimes, will handle it very differently to a young spirit, a young soul, who has never really gone through these things before. Let's just talk briefly about whole communities, because you only have to look at Africa, the Middle East, Eastern Europe, and you look at communities who've had cyclic violence, mass exterminations. It seems that in one generation, one part of that community will consciously annihilate the whole of another community. Mm. And then a little later, you'll see that sort of annihilation return perhaps to the first community. It seems to be a never ending cycle in all of those places. What's going on? Again, it is a, a case of it's less about the spiritual and more about the physical in these situations. And I think, again, one person can change these things. I know a lot of people think, oh, well, they can't, but they can. It maybe takes one soul, one energy. Look what Gandhi did. All the violence and things around his period of time. And yet he changed that. He changed the whole people's culture. Now, yes, there is this cyclic event that seems to happen. You, you have violence and then the next generation does the same thing because it's a physical thing. It's taught. It's taught from very young that you need to react this way. It's instilled in people. So... You can't get away from the, the aspects of that there are physical attributes to this. This is very physical things that happen. Here. Hate, for example. Exactly. Even though the spiritual intent may not be for that, but this group of people may be a mass of souls that has to go through this process of learning. And so they're put into a situation where they can have that experience in a community or a large group of people that are going through this. So even though it is a big group of people, it still comes down to the individual soul. That individual soul still needs to make a decision. Is this right or is this wrong? Should I do this or shouldn't I? And even though it resonates with you that this is wrong, sometimes because of the physical aspects of life and the pressure that's put on around you, whether it's peer pressure or you've got a general standing over top of you saying you must do this because you're a soldier, whatever it might be, it's still the individual soul. 
that has to make that decision. That individual soul has to deal with the consequences or the karmic debts that's brought on because of their actions. And also, I suppose, when you think about it, all of those people who kill as part of war, and even when you look at people who kill in ordinary life, is it also in question whether they are aware of the evil attached to what they're doing. I mean, for example, you watch a little child pull the wings off a butterfly. I think a lot of people feel that way, and they're encouraged to feel that way. Soldiers are encouraged to have the enemy dehumanised. So, in fact, they have no awareness of a person that's being killed and the whole of the infrastructure of that person's life. They're taught not to think about that. Absolutely. They become despiritualized. They become brainwashed to feel that this is the way life is. But that happens in all walks of life. It doesn't matter. Money is a great example of that. How many in today's society get branded with the thought that money is it? Money is the one goal in our life that we need to achieve. We're brainwashed from very small children that anything you want can be bought with money. Well, I'm afraid that's not the case. There are many people that would have testified to that. Kerry Packer would be one of them. Didn't matter how much money you've got. If you're ill, you're ill. Nothing's going to bring you back from that. So when you look at the evil aspect of things and how people respond to that, there is physical conditioning that goes around that. But having said that, there is still something deep inside all of us. Whether you're looking at someone who's an evil person and reacts badly to another person, takes someone's life, or is systematically cruel to that person, there is something inside of us that you walk away from when you become evil or you do something that is not accepted. There's that little voice, there's that little feeling inside where you know you're born with this. You're born with knowing this just isn't right. You don't have to be told that. You know inside yourself that it's wrong. But what you do, and this is where free will comes into it, you turn your back on that emotion. You turn your back on that little voice. You turn your back on the guidance, your spiritual guidance, and you walk off of your path. And some of us never come back onto it because of the physical conditioning that we get, because of the things that we're told and made to believe. But it is up to all of us as individuals to stop and feel what is right. Are we doing the right thing? Am I doing the right thing? And if it resonates with you and you feel like you're not on your path, you're not doing the right thing, then you're not. It's important to understand that.